guys, I'm Soda Pop, this is the left pedal, and today we're gonna build a completely custom fuel rail for like 50 bucks. Uh, the factory fuel rail in my Datsun 280ZX is kinda crazy, and it takes a very long time to get in and out of the car. The new fuel rail will be a lot easier to work on, and hopefully it'll get rid of some of my heat soak issues as well. Now I'll be giving you guys the exact sizes and measurements to make a fuel rail for the Nissan L28 engine, but the process should be about the same for pretty much any car. Should be a pretty fun project, I've been looking forward to this for a while now, so let's get to work. So before we get started, I do want to say that fuel rails really aren't that expensive. You can buy a nice aftermarket fuel rail for like $150. But this is a project car, and the point of a project car is to do it yourself as much as possible. So that's where we're at. So the parts we need for this project. One, obviously, is the fuel rail extrusion. This one is 2 feet long and 6 a.m. This will be the main body of the part. And then our hose barbs. These are 5 16 hose barbs with a quarter inch NPT thread. After that, we're going to need our hose clamps. And then you don't have to do this, but you can put a fuel pressure gauge on it for an extra like 10 bucks, so that's what we're doing. You'll need some drill bits, some taps, lubricating oil, something to measure with, and then a drill. A drill press would be better, but I don't have that here, so we're using a drill. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the old fuel rail and I'm going to measure the distance between the barbs so we'll know where to mark on the new one. to check it against your fuel rail so you know you did it right before you start drilling into this and we look good so after you get all these measured you're going to want to punch a little dimple for each bar this keeps the drill bit from sliding around on the metal i can't find a punch so i'm just going to use this little phillips head bit because i'm classy Alright, next we're going to use our trusty angle grinder to cut off some of the access extrusion. This really is not the best tool for this, a cutoff wheel would be a lot better, but this is what we've got. I'm going to cut a little past the line I drew. The exact length of the fuel rail really doesn't matter that much. What matters is the length between the hose barbs. So I'm going to give myself a little bit access, I'd rather it be a little too long than a little too short. All right, now it's time to drill the holes for the hose barbs. A drill press would be really helpful, but I don't have one. So I'm just gonna be using my handheld drill. I'm using a 7 16 drill bit, but I'm starting off with a smaller one just to make a pilot hole. Alright, so I definitely should have just gone over to my parents' house and used my dad's drill press. But that didn't happen, so that's okay, we're past that. But if you have access to a drill press, 
probably use that instead of a handheld drill because that was kind of a pain. I went ahead and cleaned out some of the metal shavings in the fuel rail. The next step is to tap threads into these holes so that we can screw in the hose barbs. I'm using a handheld quarter inch NPT tap. This takes a little patience, but you want to have the threads come out right. Got to back it out every couple of turns to get rid of the shavings. Well, I ended up breaking my tap holder. So now I'm just gonna use a little makeshift tap holder out of two wrenches. Okay, so I think I'm gonna put the gauge right here between the fourth and the fifth injector. I'm gonna put it pretty much right here where it starts to curve to make sure it actually comes in contact with the fuel. All right guys, the hard part is done. All the holes are drilled and tapped. Uh, I went ahead and took it out and I cleaned out all those metal shavings and I hit it with some degreaser to get rid of all that uh, cutting oil we use. Now, let's put it all together. I'm gonna cover the threads with this gasket maker. This will help ensure we get a good seal so the fuel rail won't be leaking gasoline. I'm honestly really happy with how that turned out. I have built little delete plates and interior parts before, but I've never actually built a functioning car part, so that's pretty cool and I'm happy with that. I mean, just look at it compared to the factory fuel rail. It's such an improvement. So you can buy an aftermarket fuel pressure regulator, or you can just take the one off the factory fuel rail. That's what I'm gonna be doing. And uh, just make sure to place it after the fuel rail. So the fuel's gotta travel through the fuel rail and then the fuel pressure regulator. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit the like button. Uh, consider subscribing to us here at the left pedal if you want to see more of this build. In the next episode, I'll be putting in headers, and then after that, hopefully, we'll get the dots and running again. Anyways, I'm Soda Pop. This is the left pedal. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.